few years ago, the USDA surveyed over 21,000 people and discovered that not one single person regularly received the RDA recommendation of even just the 10 most important vitamins and minerals. And remember what the RDAs are? They're the minimal amounts necessary, not the amounts recommended to combat free radicals. I guess that explains why 9 out of 10 of us die of a degenerative disease. The bottom line is that our bodies are being bombarded by free radicals and our food supply is short on antioxidants, which together lead to a very high level of oxidative damage. Let's look at the top three killers, cancer, heart disease, and stroke, to see why we should be concerned about all this. Humans are made up of trillions of cells that continually replicate themselves. Each cell has a set of genetic instructions in its center called DNA that controls cell development and replication. Free radicals can damage the DNA of cells. If enough replication of damaged cells occurs, this leads to cancer. The importance of maintaining proper antioxidant levels cannot be overemphasized in the fight against cancer. Now let's look at how they affect heart disease and stroke. Most heart disease comes from the buildup of fatty cholesterol deposits on the inner surface of arteries. Eventually, these built-up deposits can block blood flow to the heart, causing a heart attack, or block blood flow to the brain, causing a stroke. Oxidation causes the cholesterol molecules to become sticky and adhere more readily to the artery walls. Much like a balloon will stick to your living room wall after you oxidize it by rubbing it with your sleeve. Right. When you do that, you're actually stripping the electrons off the balloon surface to give it a static charge. Oxidized cholesterol acts much like the balloon with a static charge. It sticks easily to the walls of your blood vessels. Antioxidants neutralize the free radicals and thereby keep them from oxidizing the cholesterol and making it sticky. On page 13 in the book, McWilliam details a very important study. The scientists compared the reduction in death rates from various heart disease treatments, cholesterol-lowering statin drugs, fish oil supplementation, and four other forms of treatment. Mainstream medicine's weapon of choice, Statin drugs showed a 22% reduction in death from heart disease, but that paled by comparison to the 32% reduction that fish oil produced. Simply put, the protective effect of fish oil was far greater than even our strongest drugs. So why didn't this study receive the media attention it rightfully deserves? Likely because the drug companies control the media, and the drug companies didn't like the results. Fish oil costs a fraction of the price of prescription drugs and has no side effects. While analyzing fish oil supplements is outside the scope of this book, it is prudent that we urge the consumer to purchase only a pharmaceutical quality fish oil, as the world's commercial fish oil supply is often highly contaminated. Pharmaceutical purity ensures that the fish oil product will be free of mercury, lead, and other toxins. This study revealed another very important finding. The amazing success of fish oil in reducing deaths was accomplished while showing the least ability of all treatment methods to lower cholesterol levels. In other words, the death rate was lowered the most by the treatment that lowered cholesterol the least. The results confirm other recent findings that the level of cholesterol may not be causing heart disease. Cholesterol may not pose any real danger unless it is first weakened by the process of oxidative damage. In 2004, Time featured the secret killer attacking North Americans, inflammation. In Chapter 4, our book details the new research around systemic inflammation. It causes not only the big three, heart disease, cancer, and stroke, but is also a major factor in the development of type 2 diabetes, Alzheimer's, accelerated aging, and the inability to lose weight, and may be the important missing link in the current obesity epidemic. Free radicals cause oxidative stress, which causes the body to go into a natural inflammatory response to protect itself. This inflammation can cause the body to turn on itself, its immune defenses attacking its own organs. Oxidative stress and systemic inflammation work hand in glove in accelerating cellular damage. This deadly process is an underlying cause of 98% of today's diseases. If you have silent inflammation, despite how well you may feel today, you are on the fast track toward disease tomorrow. On the bright side, instead of requiring different radical treatments for various degenerative diseases that you might get in the future, preventing heart disease, cancer, stroke, diabetes, and Alzheimer's could be as simple as reducing your level of oxidative stress and silent inflammation today. This is done in three ways. One, by reducing exposure to the factors presented earlier that generate free radicals. Two, by eating in such a way as to reduce inflammation, reduce the bad fats, increase the good fats like omega-3s, and eat a low glycemic diet that doesn't spike the blood sugar and insulin levels. 
Three, by providing the body with sufficient antioxidants and anti-inflammatory nutrients, such as antioxidant vitamins, antioxidant minerals, phenolic compounds in the diet, proanthocyanidins, and coenzyme Q10 supplements. Vitamins and minerals should not be viewed as independent substances, but rather as a cooperative network of nutrients working together. When taken in proper ratios and amounts, they provide the bricks and mortar to build a strong foundation for long-term health. Leave out any nutrient, and the foundation may crumble. Just like firefighters on the front line who replenish and reinforce one another, antioxidants work best when they work together. For example, CoQ10, vitamin C, and the carotenoids all work together to regenerate vitamin E for use by the body. Folic acid can help prevent cancer, heart disease, and stroke, but only if there are adequate levels of B6 and B12 in the body. I know so many people who are self-prescribing by picking this vitamin and that nutrient off the shelf at the nutrition store. They walk out with an armful of products, but the ratios of nutrients are all wrong and they are really just wasting their money. Section 3 of the book explains the methods McWilliam used to score the different brands. He constructed an analytical model based on the individual recommendations of 12 published nutritional authorities. Each authority is recognized and respected within his or her scientific, medical, or naturopathic communities. Page 78 in the book forms the basis for the evaluation criteria. Here we see how the input of the 12 experts was used in the product comparisons. Down the left column, we see over 60 different vitamins and nutrients. In columns 3 through 15 are the 12 experts' professional opinions as to the recommended daily intake of each nutrient. The next step in establishing the comparison criteria was to create a blended standard. To do this, McWilliam established the median recommended number for each nutrient. In creating this innovative method of evaluating, the brand comparisons became based on the blended opinion of 12 experts. I really like that about this book. It's like having 12 of the world's most noted nutrition experts tell me what I should be taking. In the graphical comparison section, each of the top 150 products is featured with two graphs showing their nutritional makeup. One graph showing how each nutrient compares to the recommendations of the 12 experts, and the second graph showing how their makeup compares to McWilliams' health support profile, which we will discuss in a moment. You can see at a quick glance which products are more complete than others just by looking at the amount of open space in each graph. Each nutrient is represented by a bar in the graph. For example, we can tell by looking at the legend that the bar labeled number 5 is folic acid. We see easily that this product has a ton of folic acid. The height of the bar tells the viewer how this product fared in comparison to the blended standard. The 100% line represents the amount recommended by the 12 experts. The bar graphs also allow the reader to compare one brand to another for specific nutrients which may be of interest to the reader. For example, suppose a reader was interested in vitamin E. He could look at the graph for each brand and see how much vitamin E each has. Wow, look at the vitamin E levels there. I know, amazing, huh? There's practically nothing there. The yellow bars represent the two nutrients that McWilliam cautions about for potential toxicity. The number 48 bar is iron and the number 1 bar is vitamin A. The yellow allows the reader to see at a glance how much of the potentially toxic iron or vitamin A is in a product. The red tip above the yellow shows the reader that brand not only has potentially toxic iron or vitamin A, but that it has it in excess of the cautious dosage recommended in the blended standard. Chronic iron overload can significantly increase the level of oxidative damage to cells. Very recent research has found that long-term supplementation with iron at doses of even less than 5 mg per day can lead to iron overload toxicity. Additionally, accidental overdose of iron-containing supplements is a leading cause of fatal poisoning in children. Vitamin A can become toxic when taken in doses above 5,000 international units for extended period. Beta-carotene, the orangish colored pigment found in many vegetables, is a natural and safe vitamin A precursor. The body easily converts beta-carotene into vitamin A on an as-needed basis. Additionally, beta-carotene is a much more powerful antioxidant than retinol vitamin A. The only risk to high doses of beta-carotene is that your skin might temporarily turn orange like a carrot.